Hello. Hello. And Body Light, also known as Kim Voigt. This is your first appearance in front of the CE peeps, who we yeah. all adore. And um, first of all, I want to say hi, Eric. I love you. Yeah, and he says, hi, Mom. I love you as always. Aww. And now we're going to talk about how to mend a broken heart. We've all had one or two or three. But first, I want you, Kim, to give us a little information about yourself, your background. Tell us your story, your journey. Well, I, over 30 years ago, well, 37 actually, started in healthcare. And kind of early on, I realized it wasn't, I, I was being called to more alternative things. That was where my interest was. So just started out slowly, just, um, I started with healing touch. I studied that. I figured that kind of fit in. And it just went on from there. Um, Did you use that with your patients in your field? Um, not directly because, I mean, it's just a part of who I am. I can't oh, yeah, yeah. Stop. So I kind of put out in the morning before I go to work that I'm open to helping anybody. You know, I, I invite my soul to harmonize and align with my body and anybody else that I come in contact with that would like to have that experience as well. Okay. So it, it can happen, but it's not, I'm not, you know, heal, patient, heal. No. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, go on. Yep. So I started with that and then I trained in hypnotherapy and then I got introduced to the human crystal balls. Mm -hmm. And so I, I implemented that, that into all that I do. So I did that for a while and then I took some training in some myofascial release and some well, and I implemented that into my therapy. I studied something called self-awareness program, which is um, you really learn, you, you get an energetic reading of your whole life, and you really learn how you're creating your reality and how to shift it into a reality that you'd really like. Now, how do you do that? Do you go to a between-lives regressionist or yeah, what? Yeah a part of it but okay it's actually it's a survey that you take it's 120 questions and then i'm able to map it out with your age divide up dichotomies which will divide up where it is and figure out where the energy blocks happened and then we work from there and some are past life and some are current life and and then wrapped in there is there's an, an emotional function with each organ so we're working with that as well. So okay, it's so it's like body work, a lot of body work, like somatic experiencing or whatever right. you call it. And that okay. was actually why I just studied the myofascial release because people actually ah yeah hold trauma in their physical body in the in the muscles and in the fascia. I believe that was what when you had talked with your mother the other day through the channel. Mm -hmm. I believe. So she was referring to that you hold on to this trauma. You do. And I know that's what the Grinberg method, right? They they work on uh, the body to release these energy blocks that you've created over time and with the trauma in your life. And mm -hmm. I think I remember my sister Terry, who's who gets a lot of this therapy, say that the left side is like your personal and the right side is the career, or it could be completely the opposite, but it doesn't make any difference. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, it is very interesting. And because like we talked about on the radio, the body mimics your emotional and mental thoughts. You know? mm -hmm. So if you're a real rigid person, you could have trouble with your structure, with your skeletal system. That's mm -hmm. how it works, basically in a real quick explanation. So yeah. Yeah, you know, let me tell you, my husband is really inflexible. I mean, you know, it's his mm -hmm. way of the highway mostly, but I've trained him a little bit, softened him a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he can he can't spread his it's like this maybe. And he can't I mean his his joints are have always been stiff ever since he was a little kid. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna interrupt anymore. Go for it. Your journey. Oh. And that's exactly, you know, that's exactly what happens. Our bodies start tightening up and getting rigid. And when we start doing these releases, we start getting more conscious and then our soul can harmonize and align with our bodies. So mm. that, that's kind of how I got to all this. And then 
Then I started watching paneling Eric in, oh, maybe January, and I had no idea that I was a medium. I mm. was psychic, and I, I actually discovered that by accident when our pediatrician informed me. I didn't know that either. It was just normal to me. So, so he started coming around, and I thought he was around, and I was kind of in denial about it for a while, you know, but I thought, yeah, he's around, but what am I going to do about this? And... So then finally, I really felt like he encouraged me to connect with you. And I don't know if you realize the significance of this, but it's two months. Um, he told me through another medium when I first started that he'd be working with me. And in two months time, I'd be speaking Eric as a second language. I don't know if you realize this. Yes. Tomorrow it's two months. Oh, you do realize that. Yes, because you told me it's, a, it's a two months of a day or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, no fun. coincidence. No coincidence, I'm sure. Right. Exactly. Is Veronica still going to join us today? She was oh. going to be on this as well. No, I don't think she knew that. Uh, oh. But it's okay. I mean, uh, oh, okay. This, okay. this is all about uh, what you want to share. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, no, maybe she forgot what we had talked about originally that she was going to. So, oh, you communicated with her? Yeah. You, yeah, when oh. we were communicating about it and then I okay okay well, all right I, I think they went over the radar but that's okay we have you all to ourselves so um so tell me about your relationship with eric well so he he has I, it was like i got a crash course i spent a lot of time with eric i've really gotten to know his personality he is fun um you know, and, and he kind of, he reminds me, because I have young adult children as well, and so I'm really familiar with this, that energy, and that's how he is, and he's very fun. Uh-oh, you cut out. Stay tuned, we are now, um, exp it looks like you're muted. Okay. Oh, there we are. There we are. It, uh, oh. it muted something. Oh, that yeah, you know what? That's Eric. I know it is. It, it doesn't mute itself, okay? It's just impossible. I'm over here. <laughs> so. I know. Come on, Eric. Yeah, he says, oh, Mom. Yeah, you know me too well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, so he's, I spent a lot of time with them, and so for in the beginning, he's trying to convince me that I really am a medium. So once I agree with that, I I'm say, okay, I can channel you, I believe, Eric, you know, but I don't think I can bring any deceased loved ones through. Um, well, then he reconnects me with my mother. Oh. <laughs> he introduced me to your father. I've met, I've spent quite a bit of time with your father. Really? Yes. yes. Wow. So what do you think about him? He's come a long way, so. Yes, it's almost hard for me to imagine, you know, the things I, I hear that you went through. He's a different guy now. It's oh, thank God. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's great. He wants to be a part of your journey. You oh, know? good. Oh, good, good. And and so I took, then I tell Eric, well, okay, I can't, I can, all right, I can, Talk to deceased relatives, but I don't think I could do any celebrity interviews with you. So that's then guess who shows up? It's Robin Williams. Oh, and he is also what they're telling me and what Eric's saying. Just to start with, this is Mom. This this is your team that we're bringing forward through Kim to work with you. And there's a specific reason to each person. Obviously, you know why I'm involved. Mm -hmm. Love you, so gushy, and oh, and on that team too is is Jay. He's he's my support. He's my team. oh yes, yeah, okay, all right. Eric introduced me to him. He was another guy that had committed suicide yeah. in 2012, and I heard okay. from him for five months, and then he disappeared. And Eric reintroduced us. How, how do you spell his name? It's J A I. 
I. Yes, you spelled it unusually. J A I. J -A -I. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. That's and right. So I remember. We brought him through, and he's on this team also. So you've got your dad, you've got Eric, you've got Robin Williams, and I've got Jay. And then at the point Robin Williams shows up, I'm like, okay, what is up? Why do I have three men that have committed? This was on my website too. Yeah. Why three men have committed suicide are coming through me, and you know, and I'm saying, I don't want to give anybody the impression that I might be favorable towards suicide and Robin says absolutely not oh, no. because these things we are coming through he says you know and he didn't even go into if he was contracted to die at that time or not but he said had they been available to me in my life things could have been much different and he says someday this will be common knowledge we're going to look back at ourselves in this point in time as being barbaric the way we handle things oh I can imagine well you know I think that um bringing in guides who have uh, ended their lives, uh, it's kind of special because these are people who have struggled with the human experience. Exactly. So they can relate to a lot of what we all go through as people still stuck in a meat soup. Right, soup. right. Exactly. Uh, what's my dad's role in all this? Well, he, okay, so Eric, let me start with Eric. Eric's the volunteer coordinator. <laughs> oh, okay. Event coordinator. He could be a wedding a wedding uh, planner. There we go. Like that. He's got big plans for you, by the way, too. He kind of gave you a little twenty year rundown, uh, almost of what's gonna, you know. Oh, don't tell me. It might scare me. But go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so he's the volunteer coordinator. You know his purpose. And Jay, Jay is my support. He because we're twin flames, when we connect, I'm able to understand things more quantumly. Mm -hmm. And your father wants to help you mend your broken heart because okay. he has of it. Well, does he have anything to do with uh, helping others, not just me? Right, right, because your example is going to be a big help to others. And as I mentioned in an email, Eric's also saying, document what you do together um, and maybe others will be involved too because this will be possibly training manual someday i mean he's okay talked about doing a session on police brutality he said yes to train police this oh. can be train your citizens you know this can be used to train many people medical professionals yeah because if everybody's aligned with their vertical pillar of lightning can help you with your higher self these things would not happen on, you know, these things exactly. would, not, would not happen any longer. So mm -hmm. that's, that's their position. So okay. moving towards that and they've got you learning how to do energy healing. So, okay. I practiced a little bit and it seems to, to work. I remember in the days where I thought this was all nonsense, I had a patient and I put her in my surgical suite and I was about to do, so I can't remember what I was going to do, but I put my hands on her, and she says, oh, my God, you're a healer. And I go, okay, whatever. But no, I didn't say that. That was really nice. Oh, thank you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, many yeah, I'm still paying off the medical school loans. I better be. Okay. Yeah, many doctors are, and they don't even know it. So I know. They're resistant to the fact. If yeah. they were, what Eric is saying is if they were more open to it, it would be so much more powerful, and they could work yeah. with patients and um it can really make some profound. Oh, we're getting there. I know MD Anderson, the cancer hospital here, I'm pretty sure, has a, an energy department, energy healing department. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, I, before we start talking about uh, the crystal singing bowls, unless you want to say anything else. Oh, oh, so then I just. I mean, uh, before. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah. So the. So then the three. Oh, yeah. The three of them together, one of the ways they communicate to me is I hear music playing in my head. When it's coming on the right, it's from Eric. When it's coming on the left, it's from Jay. Oh. And in monotone with Robin there. Um, Robin, by the way, he's like the screen director. <laughs> of course he is. And he's got people dressing up. It's, it's quite amusing working with him. Oh, my I, gosh. I hear the, uh, I believe it's a Rush song. Um why you know i'm why do we have to go to this drastic extreme with you oh he loved rush in fact his eric? yeah eric loved rush in fact his password 
was whatever that song, uh, it's either 1221 or 2121, or it has wow. two ones and two twos in it because that's wow. one of their songs. Yep. So they, they play the, the phrase, um, the men who hold like men who hold high places must be the ones to start to mold a new reality closer to the heart. And with that just goose. Did you get goosebumps? Oh man. Wow. And so, so that's why they're doing it. You know, I know that Eric contracted. I'm not sure about Jay. I know that Jay and I agreed to do this eons ago. I don't know that he was to die as he did, but yeah. you know, we're doing this now and you know, so here we go. So did you have any questions about what we've talked about so far? No, uh, but I do want to, I, I know that uh, you have the singing bowls behind you. Sometime either now or at the end, I would love for you to demonstrate those. Well, Eric asked me after I talk about mending a broken heart to do a little singing bowl meditation. Okay, great. Let's do that. Perfect. That's perfect. All right. Go for it. You and Eric are a good team. Jay might want to pitch in, Robin, my dad. But let's talk about how to heal a broken heart. But you know, people can actually die from a broken heart. There is a disease that I can't remember. It's cordis something or other that, you know, um, is actually death because of deep grief and i felt like i was going to die i did many a time i felt like my heart was just going to be ripped apart it felt like it physically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so whew. well so what eric asked me to talk about was i was blocked for quite a while um for the last eight years or so, I, I write poetry. I write my own meditations. I do things with my singing bowls. I would be intuitive. And for eight years, it just stopped. Mm. I didn't write anything. Nothing was going on. I felt stuck. I, and just was like, I can't do this anymore. This this life is so hard. I would find myself, you know, sobbing during the day because it was just yeah. so hard. So... What happened was, and as ironic as it sounds, we went to Las Vegas and during the Las Vegas shooting, and we happened oh. to get up, being at the MGM and happened to get upgraded to the 11th floor that directly faced Mandalay Bay. Oh so while we came along, we heard and saw the concert. It was very loud. You know, they had a big screen and speakers, and so. So that Sunday, we had, a, we had an early morning flight. The next day, we turn in early, and suddenly, I'm feeling violent and feel like stomach. Oh. And we hear what we, at first, we thought it was machine guns. And we mm. were, no, that's far-fetched. It's fireworks. It's the grand finale. It's the last night. That's what we told ourselves. And then pretty soon, the music stopped. And it went dark, and we could see people moving. And we were so exhausted, we fell asleep. To, oh, I don't know how much longer. Siren after siren, helicopters woke us up. Oh, gosh. Out and tried to find out what happened and woke up the next morning to our family texting us. So we get back, and I'm, like, wondering, because there's no coincidence, why was I there? What was my purpose? Was there something mm. to do or learn or assist with? And that week I watched a lot of the footage and just felt kind of numb. And we both kept hearing the machine guns in our head, my husband. When you say both, who was with you? My husband. Oh, okay, good. Gotcha. So we're hearing the machine guns. And so then I, I had been away from the channeling and YouTube for so long, I decided to go on and I found a magenta pixie channel and she talked about that incident she talked about being a false if it was a false flag somebody had asked she was answering the question and basically what she talked about was that the way to counteract these things is through forgiveness and shining a white light onto the situation through forgiveness you can um you can completely neutralize the situation and at first I thought, well, how is my forgiving him and praying for him going to help anything? Because I wasn't personally involved. I didn't lose anybody I knew, although it was awful, and I had compassion for the people that happened to. 
And I just decided just to try it. So I did it, and it probably took me about a week, praying for him, sending him a white light. Um, I would just maybe hold him. I would muster up the most love I could, like a mother's love, and I would mm -hmm. send it to him. And as, as probably disgusting as that sounds to some people, I just kept doing it. No, no, of course not. I mean, everybody deserves love, you know. Right. Then, um, so in about a week, I notice I'm getting a little clearer and I'm feeling better. So then, and I have PTSD also, mm -hmm. although it's almost to a non-existent level now. Good. And so, um, but I still, I have held my parents in such a state of unforgiveness. I had such a hard time with them from the things that happened when I was small. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to forgive them by first understanding how they could do those things. Mm. And I could never get the clarity. I could never get the answer. So once I could go Stephen and it, you know, I'm being ridiculous. I felt like that I cannot forgive them when I just forgave a madman. Oh. Ooh. How could I hold them in unforgiveness for doing what? Because I know these spiritual concepts. I know them in my brain. I just yeah. it happen in my life. Because it's so personal. It's really hard. Right. So, so what I decided was you are being ridiculous. You, They did what you asked them to. Maybe it was a little extreme. It was because they were unconscious. They did not hold the same degree of unconscious. Yeah, mine were overachievers. They had that contract. It's like, okay, you mm -hmm. know, overachiever, come on, just yeah. don't take it up that many notches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started doing that with them, and that took about two or three days. And one of the things I could never understand, because I seemed to be blocked, with my intuitive abilities and that I could never bring them forward and manifest a career. Once I did that, I realized I, I was, they didn't block me. I blocked me because I disassociated when I was 24 months old. Um, cause from, from some extreme trauma. Oh gosh. 24 that. months old. 24 months old. Oh, I, wow. I, it. Oh. I remember it like it was yesterday. God. I did that because there was a lot of spiritual abuse too. Yeah. And when I did that, they were no longer able to influence my matrix or my field because children remain connected as you start submitting. Yeah. So I blocked them. They were no longer to, able to do that. So I was able to hold on to my abilities. Mm -hmm. That's why I never knew I was intuitive or psychic until a pediatrician let me know because I always had them. It was always normal. Well, what did the pediatrician say? Well, <laughs> he kept dropping little hands because he was interested that I wanted my kids to go And, you know, if they tried to schedule me with another doctor, I'd, I'd say no, only this specific doctor he was the one I trusted he had a lot of integrity and I liked the way he dealt with his kids and so he would stand outside of our home for a year and I didn't know what he was talking about going okay what color am I today and he'd walk in he's talking about auras like oh okay why did he know you read auras I have yes yes I have um, but he knew I, that at the time hmm? did, did he know that ahead of time um, he picked up that I was intuitive and I didn't know. Yeah, but how I, did, how did he? Because I went in there and I never told him I was a nurse because I want you okay. to, yeah. I want yes. to be authentically, not as a professional. Exactly. I, I agree. Through color. So I never told him that. So I would like answer his questions before he asked them one time. Oh. I tried thinking about taking off out of the room and I said no don't even think about it and I went and picked her up she got off my lap and took off and he's like and <laughs> he just clicked and so so once he said that and I really thought about it I was like why in the world would they think that then like a movie picture ran through my mind of every single thing that happened and it yes was quite amusing. so that's how I found out I was intuitive then I started looking up on it reading up on it and then I started kind of doing things that would brush up on the skills and it increased. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so 
once I forgave my parents, my whole world changed. I wrote, I've written five, six really good singing bowl meditations. Mm. I'm this. I've started a website. I've got clients booked. It was as if I turned off, turned on a switch. That's awesome. So, and it was just, you know, I just had to surrender and say, okay, I'll do it. I give up. I, I can't feel like this anymore. I'm done now. Yeah, otherwise, Eric and others would probably pester you into it if you had not. So, Eric also can uh, chime in or any of the other spirits uh, you have with you, uh, including my dad. It is, is what you're saying is forgiveness is how to mend a broken heart. Is that all you need? It is. It is. Um, I mean, there can be fear. There can be judgment. Those kind of things can block your heart also. But it's ultimately usually because of something that's happened that you need to forgive. Oh, yeah. Of yourself or forgiveness of others. Yeah, sometimes you need to that, forgive yourself, that, too. And that's, that's probably, that's probably even harder. Yeah, well, exactly. Because, you know, as I'm going through my process, I'm realizing that with my upbringing, that I didn't understand certain things, I could have raised some of my children differently. So I held myself very responsible and very unforgiving towards myself. Oh, I so get I'm that. Sure. I get that. I think every mother, maybe every parent, every mother looks back mm -hmm. on their kids' childhoods and thinks, if I have only done this differently or that differently, you just have to look at your whole style and your whole right. lovingness and stuff to really, but you know, I, I could just think back about, for example, when Michelle was, I don't know, five, she kept taking off the knob to the trash compactor and I just got so mad at her. I just got, and I was like, don't you ever do that again. And I looked at her eyes and she, she actually looked like she was afraid of me mm -hmm. and it broke my heart. And I changed my parenting style from that point forward. I was so upset with myself. I wrote three parenting books, a lot of them for my mistakes, but of course some for my, but partly my successes, but yeah. Uh, all right. So how else? Okay. Here's one question I have about forgiveness. It's easy to say, okay, I forgive you. Yeah. You know, but to really feel it down into your bones, into your heart, into your soul. How does that happen? I just, I had for, with my parents it was only three days but it was just like it was automatic once it happened it was like I snapped my fingers and it was gone and actually the veil left that's what happened the, there was oh. a veil in place yeah. Yeah. my unforgiveness towards them but how does it feel when it's gone very liberating oh wow I mean, how do you how do you definitely know that you forgive them? Because like with my mom and my dad, yeah, I forgive them. But every once in a while, I feel this negative thing. You bastard! Why? This is what you caused here. This is you know things like that. Maybe Dad can answer. Dad, are you there? Hello. Yeah. Well, okay. So he yes, and he does want to talk. He's bringing up a couple key items. Um, he said, and he refers to you very lovingly when he when he talks through me. He says, I, I did not have the tools within myself to recognize that I was harming you. I held such pain. I mean, yes, I knew I was harming, harming you, but I did not have the tools to listen to the higher guidance to know how to shift that because I just, I just held such pain in my life. And mm -hmm. the other thing and he says, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you this to make excuses. I, I just want to provide understanding. It was not about you. I love oh, you. Oh, I, I love I know. And that helps. I, I wish I could have displayed this to you when I was with you. But he says, I'm so glad. And thank you for allowing me this opportunity to talk to you about this now. And he says, the other thing that... You know, this ascension on this planet that we're going through. This right. has been for eons. Each generation has brought in a new level of consciousness. Hmm. Their generation's job was to birth us, 
but they were to demonstrate to us kind of what not to be. Oh, uh, like the authoritarian. Duality. Uh, yeah. Like my mom's life purpose, it was duality. So that I would go, hey, wait a minute, that's not right. I am not going to do that as you did with your parenting style. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, so they did have a purpose. They did. Okay. And it, it got carried. You know, that it's hard. It sounds like it gets into judgment when I describe it like this, but things went too far. Oh, yeah, of course. It, that could happen. The adrenals. Pardon me? The abuse, the adrenal. Oh, yeah. The rise. Mm. And I couldn't stop myself. Yeah. What was, was the source of your inner pain? Was there a, um, like some kind of abuse from him? For him? It's like a... Uh, oh, yeah, I think that was a true from a, a peer, like a um, when he was in boarding school. But, uh, a sexual kind of? Or yeah. Kind of something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it exactly. really messed Poor. Oh. Sense of himself. That's too bad. Oh, I'm so sorry you went through that, Dad. That's terrible. Well, he says, you know, and we could talk about the reasons why that happened, but he said, today the focus is on you, honey. Well, okay, uh, so let's uh, maybe you can also give some guidance how people can truly forgive on a real soul level, heart level. Not just an intellectual, okay, you know, I'm saying it in my head, so let it be so. And, and again, I had, I had to work on, um, okay. use whatever it means you want. Now, I, I don't currently practice this, but I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. so I did a lot of training. And one thing that I do, I learned this technique from Marine Moss, where you take three, you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and you take three breaths while you're looking up at your third eye and imagine your third eye opening. And you, take, you hold for the, so you, you know, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, deep breath in, visualize your third eye opening, hold for three, and then let it out. And you repeat that two oh, more cool. Times. And then you do it. You put your hand around your heart. You take a deep breath and a pure love and pure light into the center of your heart. You blow it in a bubble around you twice. You blow out anything that's not love. Then I would take a deep breath of pure love and pure light and send it in a bubble around who I'm trying to forgive. Oh, and Eric nice. says, do not forget to tell him this point. This is so important. When you pray for somebody and send them love and light, say this person's doing something awful and they don't really kind of deserve it. This is for you. He says, first of all, not for them. But he okay. says, what you do is use them illumination. So they either get it and start mending their ways and start moving. Wait, you send them what now? Love and light. Oh, okay, got it, got it. So they... Illumination, love and light. Uh, illumination, there we go, okay. They get it, and they start moving towards a more conscious, spiritual awareness. They start ascending, you know, they start mending their ways, or it shines, if they want to continue to be dysfunctional and dark, it shines a light, like a flashlight on them, mm -hmm. and they're going to be forced to change because they're, they're basically more obvious they're going to get caught oh yeah you know? yeah so, so what what what's the thing called that you uh, talked about putting the uh, tongue on the roof of your mouth and, and just open your third eye so marine moss if anybody wants to go to her website, how do you spell it oh, it's marine moss m-o-s-s -S. oh marine m-a-r-i-n-e e-e-n m m-a-r-e-e-n Oh, oh, Maureen. Okay. I thought you said like mar Marines, like the Army and Marines and stuff. Okay. I was way off. Yeah. Of course. So <laughs> put your tongue on your roof of your mouth, and then you would close your eyes, and you would kind of look, and you would set the intention that you're going to open your third eye and expand your pineal gland. You're going to look up at your third eye, Take a deep breath of pure love and pure light into your third eye while your tongue's on the roof of your mouth. You're going to hold it for the count of three and then blow out a breath of pure love and pure light. 
you repeat that three times okay. and then you do it with the heart. And you do it twice with the bubble around you, once with anything unlike love, like you would just say, okay, unforgiveness, whatever, goes with that third breath. And my fourth breath, I make the biggest, most loving bubble of light and I send it to the person I'm praying for, the person I need to forgive. Oh, that's awesome. And then the, way, the way you're going to be able to tell, you're going to feel different. You're going to have less of those moments where you're bothered by it. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to tell you the other thing that happens, Mom, is so say you had this trauma from your father and you're walking around with it and you've got, you're thinking about it, you've got emotion, and you're talking about it. You've got three energies that are making that strong. Mm. So you're gonna because you're the creator of your reality you're of gonna course, yeah. situations to you where maybe men are trying to disempower you or be belittling or maybe something like that okay um, they it's the universe responding to your prayers you're putting out they might but they'll draw back, back a bloody nub honey no <laughs> way <laughs> you're reliving your trauma you're letting it out this that you know yeah so that's how people create their reality. So once they forgive the situation, those kinds of situations stop happening. You know, if if this, say this were happening to you, you would notice in the way that men did with you. These kind of things would not happen any longer or they would be much less extreme or only happen once in a while. And so when there... And I don't know who the author of this book is. There's a book called Radical Forgiveness. By realizing oh. that the situations in your life are coming to you, they're little triggers. It's the universe saying, come on, we're supportive. We want you to be done with this. Let's heal this. Let's heal this. Here's another reminder. Those people or situations are actually little gifts for you to forgive oh. so that you can. So do other things help? Like I bet if, if you have to forgive some trauma, of course, EMDR and EFT, like the tapping probably helps. What about, uh, you know, other life regression, like even if it's future past, uh, you know, maybe the person you're trying to forgive, you're not totally able to do it because they really messed you up in the 1800s or whatever. So something like that could help. But also what about, uh, you know, somatic experiencing body work to try to release the pain and that's in your body and realign chakras, clean chakras, are, are those things you can do too? Yes, that, that is very effective therapy. Yes, I do do those things. I do distance healing. I do healing while, you know, while someone's in my office. I also play bowls on people's bodies. Oh, on their bodies. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, and as far as, yes, you can, because our future, past, and current life, you know, that, they're occurring like in a circular motion, mm -hmm. all together, kind of. Mm -hmm. so say we went to a past life and you forgave that person, saw what was happening. You can clear it a lot easier in this life because now you understand it, that you've actually, if you went back to your past life, you've removed the, the initial emotional charge. Right. It will stop happening in this life. Same thing can happen. You forgive it. You remove, remove the emotional charge in this life. You forgive someone. Any past life experience that's happened that's been similar, you remove the emotional charge there too. Do you do other life regression? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's cool. So if you have somebody said, oh, I just can't forgive my sister. I just, I've tried, I've tried, I want to. Then, of course, working on it, meditation, uh you know past life regression um if it's traumatic emdr energy work anything else that you would recommend uh, the oils a good diet exercise, oh yeah. yeah anything you can do that gets your energy mo moving meditation yoga tai chi all of those things are effective good and Saying, you know, some things work really well for one person and something else might work well for another person. Yeah, and cleaning your energy. Uh, J Jamie has this cool uh, visual where you take this, this wooden frame of the screen 
and pretend like you're, well, it's not real, it's invisible, of course, but, and you have the intention of cleaning your energy and you take it down your body and it's taking all the black energy out and you go all the way down to your feet. Then it's in a little pile. You take it and you recycle it in the earth. Mm -hmm. Take it outside. Take it outside. Yep. Um, so I'm sure that helps. And you know, you know, this resentment and anger that can leave really bad energy in all your spaces, your car, your work, your bedroom, your bathroom, your garage, whatever. So I think it would be good to cleanse those places by burning salt, smudging with Palo Santo sticks or, or sage, or just saying, get the hell out of your bad energy. Would that help too? Exactly. Never, okay. Exactly. It does all help. And, and it is important to do those things. Everybody's walked into a room where the air was so thick you could cut it with a knife because someone was having an argument. That yeah. Space. So, yes, um, I always do an energy healing, even if, you know, there wasn't big trauma released in a space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Energy in my space because my next client coming in would be. Yeah. That and makes I, that makes sense, yeah. I need to, and if I don't do that, I'm going to still be carrying my last client's energy with me a little bit. I'm not going to yeah. focus on my new client. I'm going to be going, oh, I should have told her that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. I like the uh, the Tibetan bells that you clink together to clear the space. That's, that's cool because it's easy and doesn't smell bad. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric, do you want to add anything before we go to the singing bowl meditation? Um. I love you, Mom, and he is so, so excited that you're agreeing to do this. And he says he's just going to come through with some information he was going to talk about afterwards, but it might be best now. He says, so you're going on a vacation or somewhere's coming up. He didn't tell me where, and you told me too, but he says, after this, he says, Mom, I want you to really take care of yourself and focus on yourself. I want you to love yourself. I want you to notice beauty, love, and light. Spend as much time in nature as you can. Might take some plastic surgery. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. Plastic surgery here. <laughs> oh, she's not having that much fun. <laughs> so, um, and he says, so, he says, once, you know, you we're going to take a layer of, you know, because like we talked about before, these things have built up for a while. The human oh. body will do some energy work, will take a layer off, but it's going to take a while for your human body to catch up with it and realign. So good food, lots of water, having fun, being joyful, that's your main thing. But he says, so you, he said, I bet you're going to notice a difference where you're, you're sensing me a little clearer already after you do this. Okay, good. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe you already do this, but he said, do you remember the people used to have this saying and there were bracelets and t-shirts, it was WWJD. What was oh it? yeah, right, right. He said, you need to imagine you have one WWED. What oh, was there it? we go. All right. And uh, just get it in your daily conversation because you know me. So yeah, just, of course I did. Think about this. What do you think, Eric? And just see what comes to mind and just kind of start playing with it. Okay. He says, I'll do that. Here and some of these things left, you are going to notice me more and more and more. Okay. Come by and give me a big, those big hugs that give me intense goosebumps. I'm ready for one of those. Oh, oh awesome. He, he, yeah. He, sometimes... Oh, one, I was sending you an email, and I think I included it in the email. He blows you a kiss and stardust, right? Aww. And That's then awesome. When he's telling me, tell my mom, I love her. I just feel this energy like this little boy getting out of bed in his Aww. little Batman jammies or whatever. And getting Aww. wrapped with his blankie and maybe his yeah. cuddling up. Did you used to do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. He was yeah. a little cuddle monster. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, oh, I love my mama. I know. It's so sweet. Okay. Are you ready for the singing bowls? All right. Let's get started. So, you just, you're going to want to be nice and comfortable. I'm going to start by doing a little meditation, getting you into a deep, relaxed state like I would. Okay. If I was just doing a normal, um, 
if I was just doing a normal hypnosis session or meditation. Okay. My chair out of the way. Okay. And so there are all different ads. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Where do you get those? Did you make you didn't make them, right? Did oh. you buy them somewhere? I have a singing bowl distributorship. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. So, yeah, I do. I sell them and I have my own stock. So, where are they made? These come from China, maybe, or no, these are from, I believe it's Salt Lake City. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, these are from Houston, I think. What? Oh, my God. Me in Salt Lake City, yeah. I thought Texas would be too backwards for that. No, I'm. No, nope. I don't want to diss my my place, my hometown. Possible the one in Texas gets them elsewhere. I'm not sure with them. I'm okay, all right. Currently, so okay, so let's get started. So Eric's really excited. Oh, and by the he's way, always excited. Eric's gonna at a certain point. Eric's gonna step in so that you can feel his interview. Okay. I'm standing back observing right now. Okay. That's, okay. So take a nice deep breath in, and as you let it out, allow your eyes to close and focus your attention within. And bring your attention up to the top of your head and imagine opening a doorway in your consciousness. And imagine that all of your attention all of your tightness, all concerns drain away from the top of your head. And now send that feeling down through your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes as your head and neck relaxes. Your shoulders relax and that feeling flows down into your arms and into your hands and your fingers. Your chest and hips relax. Now let it flow down your legs and out the tips of your toes as you go on relaxing deeper and deeper. Gentle breath, deeper, 
into meditation. Now, let's relax your mind. Really allow your mind to relax like your body is relaxed. In a moment, I'm going to have you silently count with me from one to five while I sound a series of notes. After each number, allow your mental relaxation to double. Softly begin to count with me as I sound each note. By the time we get to five, your mental relaxation can double and your mind can relax. The numbers can fade away to nothing, nothing, nothing. Want that? And you can have it very easily. Just allow each note, each sound, and each number to take you deeper. One, mental relaxation beginning to double. Two, relaxation doubling throughout your entire body. your energy. It represents your goal. It is what it is within yourself that you are moving toward. It signifies your highest potential, your highest vision for yourself, and your highest truth for yourself. Some may term this the Holy Grail. And begin by focusing on your attention in the middle on the green spectrum. As you merge your awareness, notice the left side of the veil is a dull, stagnant green. And if you proceed through to the right side of the veil, you will notice a beautiful emerald rich green, bright and shiny. This is the heart chakra within the physical body and the green layer within the human energy field. It is the gateway by which, to the degree that it is open, is where we receive insights that originate from higher levels of our being. If the heart is closed or partially closed, one perceives distortion in the transmission of information filtering The service to self energy structure holds a veil in place by distortion, creating the illusion of sin and guilt in the mass consciousness. So individuals holding beliefs here turn away from the love of spirit because of this distortion. The distortion that there is something within them that is unlovable and does not deserve the love of spirit. This is often the result of lack of self-love due to misrepresentation of self-worth. As a traumatized child, one perceives with an immature understanding and begins to reason that they must be the cause of the abuse on some level. They reason that if they behave better or did a better job in school or with their chores, the abuse would not happen. They find a way to make themselves responsible. Individuals held in the dark green shadow aspect look for love outside of self can be fearful, unforgiving, and holding on to trauma as a self-defense mechanism. 
Ooh. They place an energetic block in a misguided attempt to stop the painful feeling rather than allowing it, forgiving it, integrating it, and moving on. They put conditions on how or when they will find love, joy, or happiness. This is conditional love. Fear is the glue that holds the illusion of sin and guilt in place in the green spectrum. So now, bring your awareness to the entire length of this green ray. I would like you to take the position of observer. And on the right side of the spectrum, the bright green side, place your enthusiastic, spirited child. The child you once were, the child who only knew love. Before any distortion where the child got the idea that he or she was unlovable or that there was something wrong with them before the illusion of separation from source, when all you knew was unconditional love. And on the left side of the rainbow, place your one wounded child, the one who believed they were unlovable. And now, just be there with that child and ask her, is there anything that she would like you to know or remember? And if so, listen. Dad, when I really think about it, I never, you guys did not make me feel unlovable in any level because your behavior was just so off the wall. I knew it was you and your pain and not me. It was my peers, like from kindergarten on, that made me feel unlovable by saying certain things or teasing about my curly hair, all that. So that's... That's a, that's interesting. I tried to blame it all on you, but uh, as far as that component is concerned, but it's not the case. He says that's an interesting perspective. Very insightful, my darling. He talks about very lovingly about you, and he says he asks if you can please find it in your in the process of healing by forgiving and removing one layer of pain. He says, I know this may feel overwhelming. So many things happen. And re by removing one layer of pain, he said it's going to make a difference. There were, I know there were so many times where my behavior was inappropriate and cruel, and I didn't demonstrate the love of a father. He said if you could take one piece or one layer and neutralize one traumatizing event even, your healing process will take a new direction. You'll start to notice a difference in your clarity and with your connection to Eric. The trauma will shift to only a memory. It will remove the charge and you'll no longer be re-triggered or relive the feeling. 
And once the neutralization of a trauma takes place and you reclaim your energy, you no longer recreate a similar event in the future or in the now. He says, forgiveness is powerful and it changes your reality. And so he says, what do you think, Lisa? Do you think you're ready for a step like this today? Oh, yeah. And Eric, Consider it done. Yeah, Eric comes through. We're going to do a little bit more work here, but Eric comes through and he says, Mom, it's kind of important in the new energy, and I'm going to want you to know when you start working with people too, you're always going to, and you just did when you said yes, but you're always going to want to ask the person to repeat out loud that they accept this healing today. Now what I'm going to have you do is go to the other side of the rainbow and gather your exalted child and bring your wounded child, your adult self, all into the middle of the rainbow. And you might want to imagine picking up and comforting the wounded child. You can even imagine holding her next to your heart so your hearts are touching. And you can tell that precious little one that you love them and are there for them. And you will never let them down. And your dad asks, oh, and your mom just popped in here too, and says to say that you chose prior to your birth to be a part of the great awakening that's happening on earth. And they say you do know this, but any trauma that you experienced was gained for contrast. For one to understand joy, they must first know sorrow. And your dad says, Elisa, I accept full responsibility for my actions and for the cumulative effects it has had on your life. I apologize, and you already said you forgive him, but he apologizes again from the depth of his soul. And Lisa, if you just take your hands and place them palms up, that's what I'm going to have you do next. I'm going to have you invite your soul to permanently harmonize and align with your physical body. And what you're doing is you're reclaiming any pieces of energy that be disassociated. And now, Eric comes in, and he is going to give you that hug now. He's standing to your right side, and he places one hand in the front on your heart and one on the back in your heart and just let him hold that energy there and you can connect with that and just picture him as a little boy crawling up in your lap and loving you or whatever you need to do with to connect with this energy and i just want you to stay in that space for a while and let him love you and feel his energy
accept forgiveness on behalf of the wounded child and the adult self, surrendering to the process and release in the unforgiveness. Feel yourself being flooded with love and light and your adult self, your wounded child and your spirited child all merged together into one loving being in unity. consciousness at the top of your head we opened earlier you're going to want to close that so that you're not affected by other people's energy wow oh that was so powerful and i had i felt a coolness over my heart from yes, eric yeah like yeah spirit and yes yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yep. So we, That's so awesome. Typically that way, it's a little different with me because of like about this, if he wants me to do this, he has to come up ahead of time what we're going to do. So I guess that's how we're going to work together. He's going to come up with some plan. And, and of course, you get to ask questions. That's part of it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That was amazing. Oh. Yeah. So All right. So. You could feel when he came in. You could definitely. Yes. Yeah. I felt it. I'm, I'm not really good about picking up energy from spirit, but this really, I mean, I've felt about the size of his hand, it was, the age that he passed, a yeah. coldness yeah, 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 yeah. that I didn't feel on the other side. He says, you're going to just keep getting clearer and clearer. And you're going to feel more and more energy. Wow. It's out subtle to start. And then it's going to be so obvious. He says, watch, watch the synchronicities too. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. Now, so you let's try something. Too. What's that? You asked what it was like working with him. Oh, yeah. He, so I have to be normal during the week and go to my job. So oh, God. I, get, I, get, I like hanging out with Eric a lot better. I get sad when I can't channel Eric. Oh, no. Well, maybe y'all can do some healing on some of your patients. I, bet, I, I think he does. Yeah, he's saying he does. He shows up. But Good. I have that frame of mind where I'm listening to him. I couldn't do my job and channel him. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, what, what CPT code would you use, Eric, on energy healing for a patient? Well, uh. he says, E297. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, now, so they can get in touch with you at... 
embody dash light dot com. <clears throat> I'll put that here, guys. <clears throat> but also, so you offer past life regression. All sorts of energy healing. I mean, you go ahead. I'll let you take the stage before we close, and let me let us know what you can do. Okay, past life regression, akashic record work. Oh, from a hmm. distance. We're always going to include the bowls, no matter what we do. They're part of the therapy. I can do craniosacral myofascial release, but that has to be in person. Yes. Uh, hypnosis, anything you could do hypnosis or meditation for, I can do. Um, energy work. I'm trying to think. Oh, and the self awareness program. That's oh. somebody who really wants an understanding. How did I create my life? Yes. How do I switch it? So yeah. yeah. So what do you use to do that? Do you have to go to the akashic records? I mean, how, how does that work? The self awareness I, program. I have. It, I took training on this, and uh -huh. there's a formula. It's an actual formula. It's a test that you take. Oh, the questions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Kim. This was amazing. Dad, thank you. Mom, thank you for your cameo. Eric, thank you. I love you. And keep giving me those hugs. He says, Mom, I'm going to hug you every chance I get. Oh, he just, <laughs> it's he's so fun. He loves his mama. Oh, I he's so sweet. Love you, loves you, loves you. Oh, yeah. not as much as I love him. Did he do that to you when he was, when he was? Oh, he was, yeah, he was very affectionate. Very. I love you, I love you three times always. Mm. Or is that just something I hear? Right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, sounds good. And I'll, I'm going to turn this into a YouTube and put it in queue. Says to be continued. I love you, and we'll talk next week. And he said, "Be feeling me, mom. I'll be there." We'll do. Thanks, Kim. Bye bye. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.